A few days ago, I had a class with my new student who is completely new to software. She hadn't used any software before and Revit is her first experience. So everything is a bit overwhelming for her. Since I worked with different softwares before Revit, I had forgotten how it feels to be new in this world. It made me realize that how challenging it could be for some people to navigate in Revit and find tools that I briefly mentioned. Then I thought you might be in the same boat and I decided to create a video for absolute beginners who this is their first time opening Revit. It doesn't matter if you're a student or a professional with years of experience. My first student was a 60 year old project manager who was working on the same project as me. At first he just wanted to know what I'm doing and then he decided to adopt with the changing AEC industry going from CAD to BIM and keep up with new technologies. I'm going to share more than 10 important parts in Revit which can help you feel more comfortable in the environment and understand where to find necessary tools. So without further ado, let's dive into Revit. First thing you need to know about Revit is that we have two main types of files. We have the models or projects and we have the families. Families are simply like the objects, the components that we create or add to the model. They are different categories that you can create them. We have windows, doors, different types of furniture, wall-based, floor-based, and things like this. And on the other hand, we have the models or projects. In this part, we can create, design, or actually model the buildings, the house, the project that we want. We can add walls, floors, we can add dimension and detail as much as we want. Now let's just create a new project. In here, as you can see, we are going to select the template. If you click on this part, you can see different types of templates in here. We have templates for construction, for electrical section, for plumbing, structure, and so on. So depending on what you are going to work on, you can select one of these templates and start your work. Or you can just simply create your own template. If you want to learn how, you can check the cards in top right corner. For now, I'm going to just select simply default metric. Now, this is what you usually see when you open Revit. And as you can see, there are a lot of different parts. And I'm going to explain all of them starting from here. This part, this bar is called Quick Access Toolbar. I usually use this for going to the 3D view for creating the section or switch between thin lines. And also in here, you can see that I have added the tools that I use a lot. So you can also do this by just simply right click on the tool that you want and add it to the Quick Access Toolbar. Or if you don't want it, just right click on it and remove it from Quick Access Toolbar. Below this part, we have all of these different tabs. You can see that we have tab for architecture, structure, steel. We have insert tab, annotate tab, and messing and side view, manage, and then we have the modify tab. These are the tabs that we use the most. If you want to manage them, if you want to add some or delete some of them that you don't use, you can just simply go to file section and options and then user interface. You can simply uncheck it and remove it from this part. Now each of these tabs will give you different ribbons. These are called ribbons altogether. And if you want to, for example, find a concrete column, you can go to the structure tab and search for it in this ribbon. Inside each ribbon, we have the panel. These are called panels, the structure panel, connection panel, reinforcement panel. It is not essential for you to know all about these parts, but if you want to take exams, especially the Autodesk Revit exam, you need to know the name of these panels. You need to know which one is in which tab and you need to know the tools that are inside each panel. So keep this in your mind if you want to take those exams. However, it is really obvious within each panel, we have different tools that are related to that panel and also to that tab. I really like this part of Revit because this is one of the most well-organized, clear and clean softwares that I have ever used. Now, if you select one of these elements, for example, let's say I'm creating a wall, a structural wall in here. In this part, you can see a contextual tab. This is depending on the type of component that you are using. So if you create a 
column it will be different if you create a floor again it will be different and also after these tabs in here we have the option bar again this part is going to be different according to the component that you have now you can see that the contextual tab is like this and the option bar is like this with all of these options now if i switch to like creating a column in here you can see that we have different panels with different tools inside them and in this bar also we have different options that we can use for creating this specific component before we move down to the other sides make sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful for you until now next section is one of the most important parts in revit project browser where you can manage and control all of the views in revit we have the floor plans ceiling plans we have elevation you just need to double click on it then we have the legends schedules sometimes sheets and families in here in this part you can search for them for families maybe or for floor plans for elevations or for views that you can't find also if you want to learn how you can manage this part better and customize it for your need you can check cards in top right corner now the next part is this drawing view let me show you this way inside this red rectangle we can do we can model we can move we can modify we can do anything inside this part you have different views in here where you can switch between them let me turn this off if you have like different views like these you can go to view tab and you can click on these tile views and you can see all of the views like this you can manage it for example you can delete one of them and use it like this or you can just simply close the inactive tabs let me go to tab view and now you can see that this icon is active if i click on it it will delete the rest of the views it wouldn't delete it it just hides them you can have them again from this part and also with this switch window you can switch between different views and you can change them if you have too many views open you can use this option now it's time for the next section which is properties again one of the most important parts in revit because it will give us a lot of options a lot of tools that we can use for each view or each element that you select so as you can see now we are in a ceiling plan we have different tools in this part but if i go to one of the views one of the elevation you can see that the parameter the options are different again if i select one of the walls this is structural wall if i select this one in here we can select between different types of this wall for example if i open this part you can see different types of wall this part is called type selector and we have different tools for it in here we can go to its edit type we can change it we can modify it and now if i select another component another family like this column in here we will have a whole different option a whole different parameters and we can change it again we can go to edit type we can switch between different types of it if you have any i don't have any other type of column in here so this is the only option i have and like this we will get different parameters different options for different components and families and views section number i don't know what is this part which is called view control bar in this part we can control the scale of this view this drawing view you can change the level you can add shadow you can see the elements that you have hide or you can like isolate the elements and work on them there are a lot of things that you can use these options for it will help you to work on different elements a lot easier below this part we have the status part which sometimes guides you sometimes will show you what you have selected if you can see it which reminds me of autocad for me autocad was the first software that i learned and i think if you are architect you probably start with autocad too am i right let me know if autocad was your first software or which software you started with what was your first software how was your experience with it next to status bar we have two other bars too this part is called 
workset bar and this one is called design option bar if you want to hide them you just need to go to user interface and uncheck these parts also if you can't find this project browser or the properties you can go to view tab and then the user interface and just simply check these parts and you will have them in the environment last but not least we have this little bar in here which is really really helpful when you are working on different projects this part is called selection toggles and you can use it for selecting pinned element for selecting the files that you have linked to your revit for selecting different layers objects in different layers and so on if you want to learn exactly how they work, you can check the cards again. I created a short and I explained everything about these parts. Now, I don't think there is any other thing that you need to know about the environment of the Revit, but I also want to show you how you can navigate around. So let's go to the 3D view. And in here, if you want to like navigate in this part you can use the scroll of the mouse i'm using the scroll and if you want to rotate in this view you need to press shift and again press scroll and move to different sides also if you want to use a navigation bar you can click on this part and in here you can zoom you can orbit and you can pan you can use this navigation wheel if you are not used to moving in revit turning around, orbiting, zooming, and things like this. Take time and play with these options and I'm sure you will learn how you can use it. Now, my last tip is about saving. If you want to save a project, you need to go to file, use save or save as. I'm going to just simply save. And in here, after you assign an address and give a name to your project, you need to go to options section. And in this part, before you save it, you need to set the backup number. You don't want to have like 20 files next to the file of the project in your folder. I'm sure you don't want it. So set this on a reasonable number, maybe five, maybe three. I usually use three for the projects that are really important. And if it's not that much important, use one. Now that you understand more about the Revit environment, make sure to check this video if you are about to start your first project.